Derek, to probe the philosophy of evolution, we have to talk about evolution and religion because it's definitely one of those topics where yeah. evolution can play a critical role. And in this discussion, um, one can appreciate how, as, as you've argued, that paleontology can um, have a seat at this table because it provides information about, about the historical development. And so one can, if one wants to, uh, from an Abrahamic point of view, look at creation, that there was some kind of theistic evolution. I mean, the, 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 the fossil record would, would obviate a, 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 an early creationism kind of approach, but a theistic evolution could be um, compatible with the fossil record. Mm -hmm. Now, in that regard, uh, there are two, the, the prevailing theory is that the whole thing was entirely contingent, mm -hmm. that there are no uh, trophisms or mm -hmm. directionality, mm -hmm. uh, but some challenge that. Mm -hmm. And so how has that, um, that debate occurred? What's been the reaction in terms yeah. of the pure contingency of the fossil record versus possible directionality? Yeah. And how would either one interact with a, a theistic evolution stance? Yeah. So um, uh, philosophers and scientists um, who favor the idea that evolutionary history is highly contingent, um, you're exactly right. They, they often see that as challenging, um, the, the suggestion that there's any sort of directionality or that evolution is heading anywhere in particular. Um, you know, the, the idea of contingency, I think, also raises really interesting questions about the status of human beings, human persons in the larger unfolding narrative of life's history. You know, if, if evolution is highly contingent, then, um, you know, we can kind of look at that history and say that if anything, any number of things had been slightly different mm -hmm. millions of years ago, we wouldn't be here at all. Uh, quite likely nothing remotely resembling human beings would be here at all. Um, we'd have a, a planet with completely different forms of life, you know, um, uh, hanging out on the surface. And, and right. that, cha that challenge to the status of, of, of humanity, in a way, mm. could maybe indirectly pose some challenge to, to religious theistic tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take some examples yeah. of this counterfactual history. Mm -hmm. If uh, that, that asteroid didn't uh, kill off all the dinosaurs, yeah. uh, it might have been hard for our ancient tiny mammals to have existed with all those hungry dinosaurs around. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. Uh, although, and then there are, on the other side of this, uh, um, convergentists, um, uh, scientists, philosophers, who tend to see evolutionary convergence as more of the hallmark of, of evolutionary history. And they would answer that counterfactual question very differently. And yeah. um, What would they say? Yeah, uh, so there's a, a fascinating example from the early 1980s, there was a scientist, Dale Russell, who speculated that, you know, a certain lineage of troodontid dinosaurs would have maybe eventually given rise to some humanoid creatures, kind of like us, oh. bipeds oh. with language, <clears throat> you know, they'd maybe communicate via bird song, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they'd, they'd kind of kind of look like us, but mm. um, would be descendants of dinosaurs. Well, so, convergence, yeah. uh, different evolutionary paths, the same thing, yeah. like supposedly right. eyes, right. has come from right. different evolutionary patterns is an argument right. for convergence. Right, right. Is that taken exactly. seriously? It is, yeah. And of course, um, and, you know, to be fair, um, to, you know, scientists um, who, who do think that convergence <laughs> is more the dominant <laughs> theme of evolutionary history have many, 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 many examples to mm -hmm. point to. Uh, and so, this is a really interesting question for me, this, this whole debate about the relative importance of contingency versus convergence. I mean, on the one hand, it's a, it's a scientific issue. We need to approach it empirically and try to think about what the evidence suggests. Um, but it's also an issue with much bigger importance when you start asking bigger questions about the place of humans in the larger scheme of things. Yeah. What about the uh, kind of uh, wild kind of factuals that yeah. if the dinosaurs weren't um, yeah. d destroyed by, by a cataclysmic event, that yeah. they may have developed yeah. intelligence and, yeah. and, and, right. and had human-like characteristics. Right, is, right. Is that, is, that, is that taken seriously? Yeah. Uh, 
You know, it's speculative. <laughs> it's um, it's it's an idea that's out there. You know that that some folks have entertained. I actually think there's another. Um, as a philosopher of science, there's a related question here that I find completely fascinating, which is really what role uh, do counterfactuals have mm. in science? Um, historians actually have debates about this and disagree sometimes about the, the legitimacy of speculations about counterfactual history. And it's completely fascinating to me that in thinking about paleontology, right, you can have paleontologists who sometimes disagree about these counterfactuals. Yeah. Sure, because yeah. to, to, to develop a, a counterfactual in a logical yeah. way, you, you're making assumptions about the, the facts that you do know. Right. And, and how they would develop under slightly different conditions. So, right. So that's like, that's like trying to, um, uh, trying to simulate an experiment when you when you don't when you can't yep. do it. So yep. it's a thought experiment that you're simulating yep. by doing it in different ways. Yeah, <laughs> quite right. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's exactly right. And and then the interesting question is, hmm, you know, how far can that take you <laughs> as your counterfactuals um, kind of get further and further away from what actually happens? You right. Know? Yeah. Right. Uh, but but overall, uh, how important is that? fundamental question between contingency and convergence in yeah. addressing yeah. the relationship between religion or a potential um, supernatural yeah. being involved in the evolutionary process. Yeah, great. I, so I think it's, uh, I think there's a really interesting connection. You know, I do think um, ideas about contingency so I don't think any of this is decisive, but I think ideas about contingency at least put some pressure on, on theistic traditions mm -hmm. or on, they put some pressure on some of the claims about um, the importance, the status of human beings mm -hmm. that are um, kind of deeply baked into theistic tradition. Right. Um, and so it's an interesting challenge there for, for, for theists to kind of think about how to handle. Yeah. So is the... Is the um is, is trying to find convergence uh, kind of artificially then motivated by, by uh, yeah. paleontologists who have theistic uh, uh, motivations? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want to, um, to uh, kind of generalize in that way. I mean, I guess that could, that could conceivably be a motivation, just like an interest in contingency could be motivated by yeah, kind of, you, know, right, right, right. you could have you could have um, both um, ways, religiously both. relevant motivations right in, right in Re religiously ways. or anti-religiously yeah. motivations yeah. because the because the implications of contingency yeah. or convergence are clear yeah yeah um yeah I mean, I mean some some would argue that there is a case even in a theistic evolution sense yeah. to deal with you know 100 percent contingent that you know yeah. it's a little strained but right you you can you could you can figure out how to do that yeah i mean if yeah. you have if you have a, a strong belief in theism or, or atheism, you, yeah. can, you can fit uh, any uh, facts to the curve that you would, you would draw. That might be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think these issues, so um, they, they are relevant you know, to questions about, about religion. Um, I also think they're just intrinsically scientifically interesting mm -hmm. too. And so one could very well, and I'm sure many people do, kind of come to these questions about contingency and convergence. Um, just intrigued by, you know, by, um, um, by, ev by evolution. Sure, evolution it's, a, history, it's a fundamental yeah. question. And, yeah. and because it's a fundamental question, that's why it affects uh, the evolution religion debate. Yeah, yeah Because right. that's, that's what, at right. the heart of that, uh, that yeah. dyadic tension is the most fundamental question you can ask. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. 